I'm sure most of you know how a hard drive works. It has a disk that spins around, allowing the computer to read and write memory. Now here's a Rubik's Cube. Notice that it's able to spin on six faces instead of the hard drive's one face. Does this mean if we were able to store data on a Rubik's Cube, it would be six times as efficient as a hard drive? Okay, so to understand how we are going to store data on a Rubik's Cube, you first have to understand what exactly a Rubik's Cube is. A Rubik's Cube is split up into 26 pieces, 8 of the pieces being the corner pieces, 12 of the pieces being edge pieces, and there are 6 center pieces that do not move. So for the sake of this video, we only really have 20 pieces. So now let's look at how these pieces can be rotated while staying in the same place to give different states on the cube. As you can see here, a corner piece can be rotated in 3 different ways, giving 3 different states of the cube while an edge piece can only be rotated in two ways, allowing for two different states of the cube. Now let's take a random cube and try to solve it. As you can see, there's a problem here. We almost solved the cube, but we have one edge flipped. This is called an edge parity. There are three different types of parodies that can lead to the cube not being able to be solved. The first being the corner parody, the second being the edge parody, and the third being the swap parody, where you have an even amount of edge swaps and an odd amount of corner swaps, or vice versa. Now keep that in mind while I explain how a file is actually stored. A file is just a list of ones and zeros, where a one or a zero represents one bit of information for the file that is being stored. Now to put into perspective how many bits is in one image, this small 256 by 256 pixel image contains over 1.5 million bits. Now here is how we are going to use a Rubik's Cube to store these bits. We are going to rebuild the Rubik's Cube and at each point we are going to take all of our pieces that we could put in the next slot and assign them a value. This value will be a binary string and each rotation of the piece will represent a different value. So for example, when we first start making a cube, we're going to start with a corner piece. So we're gonna get all of our corner pieces and assign each one a value. Then we're going to rotate all those corner pieces and assign a different value. And we will do this for all of our corner pieces. Then choose the piece with the longest string that matches our data. Next, we will use an edge piece and continue doing this until we run out of pieces. Here's an example of how we would put back together a cube. We would always start at the same position and end at the same position, so you can know where to read and write information from the cube. Now let me try to solve the cube. Notice that we have a problem here. If we flip over the cube, we have a parity. I personally didn't want any of the cubes to be impossible. So what we are going to do instead to make sure we do not have a parity is we're gonna make these last four pieces blank. So we only will make cubes up until the last four pieces. That way, if we were to have a real Rubik's cube, we could always get it into that position, just ignoring the last four pieces. Okay, so that is all the explanation I need to get this working. I made a Python script that is able to take a file, in this case it's going to be that image I showed before, and it's going to turn this file into binary data, then turn that binary data into this cube notation. Now we have our file in a form that you could read and actually create Rubik's cubes. Now when we run this script, it takes around 4 minutes to take the image file and turn that into the Rubik's cube notation. It takes around 44,814 Rubik's Cubes in order to store this file. It then took around 9 minutes to turn these Rubik's Cubes back into the image. But what if we wanted to do this in real life? The current world record for solving a 3x3 Rubik's Cube is held by Max Park, where he did it in 3.13 seconds. Let's assume he is able to read this notation instantly and is also able to get a world record solve 
and then is able to turn a solved Rubik's Cube into this notation at world record pace over and over again until he finishes storing this file. So with 44,814 Rubik's Cubes and him being able to turn it into our notation in 3.13 seconds for every single Rubik's Cube, that would mean he would be able to finish this task in 39 hours which is a bit too slow in my opinion. So I'm considering adding Zhu Ruihong, the person who is second on the world record leaderboard for the 3x3 Rubik's Cube. But I figured adding a child to the simulation would be unethical. However, I did find this video of a robot being able to solve a Rubik's Cube in 0.38 seconds. So if we were able to use this robot, we could expect to store this file with physical Rubik's Cubes in 4.7 hours. However, we also have to consider the cost of the Rubik's Cubes. The cheapest I could find a Rubik's Cube was 64 cents. So for 44,814 Rubik's Cubes, that would be $28,681 in USD just for this one picture. So let me know if you think this is worth it. And also, if you like this video, I do appreciate any feedback. And I also try to respond to every comment.